there, welcome to Inquiring Minds. My name is Doug and I'm back with another Pen Resurrection Sunday video. Last week's resurrection was almost too easy. That almost guarantees that the next one will be governed by Murphy's Law. I'm coming, boys! Oh, boy, when things go wrong. And that seems to be what's happened, as everything that could go wrong, did go wrong. It certainly gave me a number of opportunities to find solutions to the problems that arose during restoration. Six main problems presented themselves and I solved all but one on this 1944 Parker Vacuumatic in black. And that's why I called this episode five out of six. Find out what I couldn't fix with this pen right now. <laughs> This restoration might be a bit confusing as I stole parts of this pen to restore my Azure Blue Parker Vacuumatic, which came with a twisted nib and a horribly chewed up section. So I took the section and nib of this black 1944 to restore this blue 1945. And that left this 1944 with some major issues. When I completed this restoration, this pen had had six major issues, five of which I've solved. It had the signature L.E. Crow engraved into the barrel. Maybe it belonged to French Brandon Lee. Why don't you tell me a story? The nib tines were twisted like a pretzel and eventually one tine snapped off. The section was gouged beyond recognition. The vac pump was horribly stuck and I subsequently discovered it was glued in. And the reason it was glued in was that it was missing some of the barrel threads inside, which resulted finally in the blind cap not closing all the way once the pump was fixed. And it was that last problem that I couldn't resolve. Here's a short video of the restoration process, and then I'll come back with some writing samples of the restored pen. I won this pen on eBay. Ba -ba -da -ba 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 -ba. I got lots of toilet paper. And there it is. This is a black transparent pearlescent vacuumatic and it's from 1944. So that would be that's the four right there with two dots. That would be the second quarter of 1944. You can see it has got an engraving on it but it's not that deep and I think I might want to take that out. Looks like it was done at a jeweler's sort of hand done. Nice blue diamond Parker clip black finial it is a vacuumatic and there's no sack in there and there's the nib but not bad shape at all maybe I'll use the section from this pen and the nib from this pen uh, so I'm thinking that I might take the medium nib clean that up and use that on my azure blue pearl vacuumatic one of the tines was broken so I ground them both down even and I've sort of polished them into a stub with some 2000 grit, I think that's 2000 or 2400, 2400 grit uh, micro mesh. And so it's really rough right now, but those tines are touching, they're even. And I think what I'm going to do is put this in the pen and then it'll be easier to control to go through the micro mesh to smooth it out and get it writing. Once it's writing as a stub, then I can uh, restore the rest of the pen. So here is that section after I've dremeled it down to some kind of a normal shape and then polished the hell out of it, starting with some coarse sandpaper and working all the way up through the micro meshes and then some polishing compound. So it probably has some more polishing to do, but I think that's going to look good on the end of one of these pens. And here is the L.E. Crow barrel with the 
logos and imprints still intact and the signature is gone that was all with grit 400 sandpaper and now I'll go up through the micro meshes and polish it up and here it is after all the micro mesh and the polishing compound I'm probably going to go over it again with some finer grades of micro mesh and then polish it again because I'm still getting some haze right in there but as you can see the imprint is still intact and the signature is completely erased so this was one hell of a stubborn vacuumatic I'd polished the barrel up got that signature out of there then thought okay well let's take the pump out so I put my tool on it and tried and tried lots of heat to the point where I thought it was going to melt the celluloid and it would not budge and so I put several drops of this penetrate pen potion number seven from Pensbury Manor inside the barrel and on the outside of the pump and left it overnight and this morning it actually budged so now the trick is to try to get this pump out of here without breaking that rod because I know it's going to be stuck I'm going to take my endoscope camera here and take a look down that barrel and see how much gack there is and then use my dental probe and chisel and try to get it free the camera showed that there was a lot of gack down in that barrel actually desiccated sack gack should be dac desiccated sack try to scrape it away as best i can but there's some still pliable sack in there i can feel oh i finally got it out i put an allen wrench down in there and pressed down on it as far as i could and there's the unit spring works well and the cup seems to be in good shape so now i'm going to use my dremel tool to drill out that little pellet right there and get it ready for resacking but it needs a lot of cleaning up those threads are just jam-packed with i don't know whether it was glued in there or what but it was the toughest one i've ever had and there's the inside of that barrel see lots of desiccated sack and still a little bit of that rubbery sag left so that's going to take some cleaning so i've discovered why this pump was so difficult to get off whoever replaced this sack on the pump put the sack all the way back onto the threads so they moved the sack not back to here where it's supposed to go there's a little ledge right there so there's the ledge that's where the sack goes to they actually got it back up over that ledge and onto the threads that's why there's so much gack in there and it basically solidified it on top of those threads so now i'm having to scrape it out of there because it was fused with those threads test tube brush to clean that barrel out i've used my dental tool to clean up those threads right there to clean all that gack out of there i've drilled out the pellet without much damage or any damage to that cup and that pump is working nicely now and there's the remnants of that sack and here is the pen now five of the six issues have been fixed the signature is completely gone without a single trace the nib writes smooth as silk as you'll see in a moment the section looks rather normal actually if you don't know the real shape of a parker vacuumatic section I'm rather proud of how this came out considering how it looked when I started and issues four and five the stuck pump and the missing barrel threads once I got it out I had to shellac it back in place so unscrewing the blind cap won't keep unscrewing the pump and six because the pump wouldn't go all the way in the blind cap now won't close all the way it just runs out of threads inside there so you have to be careful you don't over tighten it otherwise when you try to loosen it it'll break that shellac seal and pull the pump out now let's look at a writing sample and we're back with the writing portion of the resurrection this is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper and this 
is a 1944 Parker Vacumatic and it has a 14 karat gold stub nib. Let's check the wetness. Well, this is nicely wet and ultra smooth. This is like butter. And of course, I was very pleased with how that came out, considering that it was basically a piece of junk with that nib tying broken. And as you can see, it's writing with a beautiful stub style line. And the ink is Waterman's Serenity Blue. And as to line variation, the stub nature of the nib gives you thin horizontals and thicker verticals. And the line this nib makes goes from 0.4 millimeters at the thinnest to 0 0.8 millimeters at the thickest which makes it western extra fine to broad or Japanese fine to double broad on my Richard Bender line width chart which you can find linked in the description below and for our quote And for some reverse writing, yeah, there's some edge there that I could smooth off, but it's actually very wet. And some quick writing. Yeah, that feed has no difficulty keeping up. So what are my thoughts about this resurrection? I was actually of two minds as to whether I'd publish this resurrection at all. In one way, I didn't want to expose my shortcomings in public. 12 inches. Oh, you're way off. And in another way, this isn't a failure because I fixed five of six major problems. And I was very proud of how I was able to erase that signature without a trace. And this nib is just amazing now. Sometimes it takes a little bit to get started, but a lot of pens are like that. But when it writes, it's incredibly smooth, thick, and wet. I was also of two minds as to whether to sell this one or not. There's so much unusual about this pen, it makes it difficult to put a price on it. There's the custom ground stub nib, the unusually shaped, but nicely shaped in my opinion, section. And the big thing is that gap in the blind cap. If you screw that blind cap down too hard, you risk getting it stuck. And when you try to unscrew it, it will break that shellac seal and the whole pump mechanism will unscrew from the barrel. Not good. I might keep it until I can find a new barrel and blind cap to replace it to make it more of a normal pen. I'm watching an eBay auction right now that might just be perfect for this pen. So you might see a resurrection update on this pen in the future. And there you have it. If you like this video, please like and subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And you can join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say, thank you. watching and that's all she wrote I made this <laughs>